Hello again. Last video in this series, we covered how to configure your Firebase project to enable Firebase dynamic links. And then we created our very first Firebase dynamic link in the console. Now let's do something more interesting and actually receive and interpret a dynamic link in our Android app. Oh, and as a bonus, let's also cover how to use Firebase dynamic links alongside your already configured app links in your Android app in this video as well. It's gonna be a fun-filled Firebase ride. So let's get started on this episode of Firecasts. Now, receiving a dynamic link in your app is actually quite easy. The way it works is once a dynamic link is clicked, that link gets passed into your app along with the Firebase dynamic link data, including the deep link parameter. Based on that deep link parameter and which activity is configured to handle the URL in that deep link parameter, your Android app will open to the correct activity when a user clicks on a dynamic link. So let's see how we make those configurations to receive the dynamic link and open the app to the correct activity. First, let's make sure we've already added the Firebase Dynamic Links SDK to your Android app. This requires adding both the Firebase Core Libraries and the Firebase Dynamic Links Library to our app level build doc gradle file. At the time of this recording, this would be Firebase Core 16.0.5 and Firebase Dynamic Links 16.1.5. So I'll add those in here, but you'll want to be sure to check the documentation for the latest version at the time that you're watching this video. Next, remember the dynamic link we created on the console and the deep link parameter that we set up for it? Well, we'll need to configure which activity we would like to handle that deep link URL contained within that dynamic link. And we can do that by configuring that information in our Android manifest file via intent filters on our activities. So let me start with my main activity, which for my purposes will handle all dynamic links that lead to my app. So I'm going to add this new intent filter with a view action and a default and browsable category. And then I'm going to add these data tags that will tell it which deep link URLs it should handle. In this case, I want this to handle any URLs that have a host of example.com. And just to be safe, I'll make sure it can handle both the HTTP and HTTPS schemes. Okay, so with this set, my app is now configured to handle all dynamic links with a deep link parameter set with the example.com domain, which is perfect for my example. In your own app though, you'll want to set up intent filters with different host URL patterns for each activity where it makes sense to receive a dynamic link. You'll also need to set a meaningful deep link URL for each dynamic link that corresponds to the matching activity that you want to open when that link is clicked. So for example, a dynamic link that ends with slash promo will probably have a different deep link parameter than a dynamic link ending with slash welcome. And you'll want to send users to different activities depending on which link they came from. Okay, so at this point, we have the mapping for which dynamic links will launch which activities based on their deep link URL. Now, let's take a look at actually extracting that link within an activity. For my example, I only have one activity receiving Firebase dynamic links my main activity. So I'll look at adding code to receive and handle the dynamic link here. The way I can get the Firebase dynamic link is by making a call to the Firebase dynamic link libraries, like so within my onCreate method. So let me type out that method call. It would be Firebase dynamic links dot get instance dot get dynamic link and to that I'll call get intent and then add an on success listener. Now, there are a few important things to explain in these calls to understand what's happening before moving on to my link handling code. So let's step through them. The first is the Firebase Dynamic Links .get instance method call. So in addition to providing us with a singleton instance we can use to call into our Firebase Dynamic Links SDK methods, this call is also what enables Firebase Dynamic Links analytics tracking in Google Analytics for Firebase. So if you have analytics configured for your Firebase project, this get instance call ensures that the events associated with interacting with the Firebase dynamic link are reported. Next is the get dynamic link get intent call. Now, this is an asynchronous call that returns a task object sometime later after fetching the dynamic link data from the Firebase dynamic link servers. This call is important because it's actually what checks for any pending dynamic link data that was captured if we're coming to this activity from a user clicking on a dynamic link. 
And it might also involve doing some extra steps like resolving the short link URL to the expanded URL that you'll need to extract your deep link data. Since this call is asynchronous, it returns a task object on which we need to add success and failure listeners. These will be called once it has completed making the fetch for getting the dynamic link data. Which finally brings us to the add on success listener call, where we attach a new on success listener to that task that will be called if everything went according to plan and the call succeeded. In here is where we will add our link handling code, since we will have received the link successfully and can start doing some processing on it. Okay, now let's get back to completing our on success listener. So when I've successfully received a dynamic link, let me first just log that to make sure I know, hey, we've got our link. So I'll add in a call here like so, log.i for my main activity, and let me log the message we have a dynamic link. Great, now that we've got our link, let's extract the deep link URL. So I'll do that by creating a variable handle for the deep link URI object and do a null check on my pending dynamic link data just to be safe and then extract the deep link data to my URI variable. Nice. Okay, and now that we have our deep link data, let's just log that too so that we know we've extracted it. So if deep link not equal to null, log.i, my main activity, here's the deep link URL, and I'll display what the deep link URL is that we've captured. And finally, I'll add some link handling code specific to my sample app. In this case, I'll be setting the view pager to a specific page in my app based on a current page parameter, denoted by cur page in my deep link URL, and I'll send the user who clicked on this link to the appropriate part of my app. So I'll extract the link URL link parameter and capture that in my string variable like so. And after getting the current page, I'll set my view pager appropriately. This part might not be as important for you to note here, as you'll want to modify this to fit whatever makes sense for your app logic. And of course, we'll also need to add a failure listener in case there are any errors retrieving the dynamic link data. So I'll add that here as well, and just log the fact that we couldn't retrieve the dynamic link data. So I'll add on failure listener and create this new anonymous failure listener here and implement its on failure method and then log the message for my main activity. Oops, couldn't retrieve dynamic link data. Okay, now we'll also want to include the same call in our onStart method for activity. So let me refactor what I'm doing here in a method called check for dynamic links. So I can call it both from onCreate and onStart. And now I'll make sure I'm calling them in both those methods. And there we have it. We're now able to receive and interpret a dynamic link in our Android app. Actually, you know what? Let's test it out. So let me bring up my handy app that literally just displays a clickable dynamic link I've previously configured in the Firebase console here. And I'll click on the link and let's see what happens. Okay, so on our device, my Learn Miwok app has opened up as expected. And if I look in the console output, I can see that yes, we did receive the dynamic link. And double yes, we were able to extract the deep link URL from the dynamic link data. We, but you know what? I'm not satisfied yet. I wanna see this working when my app isn't already installed. So let's try that. So I'm gonna delete my app from my phone and reopen my handy app that displays my clickable dynamic link and click it. Okay, so I'm taken to the Play Store. Great, I'm downloading my app. Good, it's installed. Now I'll launch it, and yes, the app is launched correctly. And now let's see in the console that we received our Firebase dynamic link and dynamic link data, and we did! Oh yeah, rock and roll, y'all. And there you have it. You are now receiving dynamic links in your Android app. Congratulations! Oh, but I mentioned I would talk about using Firebase dynamic links with app links, didn't I? Yeah, let's talk about that. Now, one important thing to note is that even if you do have existing app links, you don't necessarily need to reuse them. It is perfectly fine to use a new set of deep link URLs specifically for your Firebase dynamic links, and you'd receive and handle them just as we've shown. But maybe you do want to use your app links because hey, whether your app is already installed and the user gets to your app via an app link, or if they come to your app via a Firebase dynamic link, maybe the same flow can work for both paths into your app. And if they do, then yes, 
you can definitely reuse the existing app links you have configured. To do that, let's rewind the tapes and see what we need to change. Remember when we were adding intent filters to our Android manifest file? Well, if you're using app links, you will already have intent filters configured for matching URLs to the appropriate activities. So just leave those in there. No need to add anything new. You will need to use deep link URL parameters that match the URL patterns for your app links though. So let's set that up now. In part one of this series, we created a dynamic link via the Firebase console. We'll do that again here, but let me now edit this Firebase dynamic link by changing this deep link parameter to something that will match the URL patterns for my existing app links. There, that does the trick. Okay, and with that done, we use the same link receiving and handling code that we set up for our Firebase dynamic links that we showed earlier in each activity that will match the deep link URL patterns we've configured in our app links. Yes. Note that when a user already has the app installed and clicks on a regular domain link directly, they will go through the standard app link flow and you will use the intent.getData method you're already using to retrieve the link data. For the dynamic link entry point use case though, you'll need to use the Firebase Dynamic Links SDK calls we showed earlier to receive and extract the link data instead. Make sense? Yeah. And finally, what if you want to configure your Firebase Dynamic Link as an app link? That is, you want to capture clicks on a Firebase Dynamic Link directly as an app link within your app if the user already has it installed. This can be useful to do if you want to avoid extra network round trips and you still get the Firebase Dynamic Link's analytics data recorded even if you configure it as an app link. So how do you do it? It's actually pretty simple. Let's go back to our Android manifest file. So first, instead of setting our Android host to the URL matching the previous deep link parameter, we'll set it to match the domain of our Firebase Dynamic Link. That's right, the .page.link subdomain we created in part one in the series when we created our first dynamic link. This means that we will be receiving clicks to Firebase Dynamic Links directly to our app if it's already installed, rather than go through the additional round trips to our Firebase servers. Now note that you'll need to add this Android auto verify equals true attribute to your intent filter to make sure this is a verified link and that a properly configured assetlinks.json file is available on the host domain we've specified below. This is the same auto-generated assetlinks.json file that was created when we made our first dynamic link in part one in the series. So don't worry, this file is already in place. And that's it. To receive the dynamic link data, you'll still need to make the Firebase Dynamic Links SDK calls as we did earlier. That is the Firebase Dynamic Links.getInstance.getDynamic Link method calls that we put earlier. And that's because we may still need to convert a short link into the expanded URL. And we also want to track the analytics data for this Firebase Dynamic Links click event. Also note that although the link data may also exist in the intent.getData method call that you're using for app links, since we're coming from a Firebase Dynamic Link in this case, the captured link data available in the getDynamicLink getIntent call takes precedence since the link will be captured there. And that is it. You are rocking and rolling with Firebase Dynamic Links, creating them and receiving them in your app. Congratulations. But wait, there's more. Remember how in my first video, I mentioned that if you wanted to use custom domains for your Firebase Dynamic Links, you totally could do so? Well, the next video in the series is gonna cover just that, using Firebase Dynamic Links with your own custom domains. If you wanna see that, just stay tuned. That'll be coming up soon. Oh, and do you like Firebase videos? Well, if you wanna see more of these, hit that subscribe button down there and you'll get to see all of them as they come out. Toodaloo for now.